All right, good morning, everyone. It is nine o'clock. We're gonna start on time to today. We have a few other folks joining us. Today, our webinar is Remote Patient Monitoring, Leveraging Technology to Improve Hypertension in Underserved Communities. We are so excited. We have a very robust PowerPoint for you presentation. Wonderful presenters. We got to chat with them earlier. So without further ado, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and just take myself off mute. If you have any questions, feel free to either save them for a question and answer after the presentation, or you can put them in the chat. Um, we do have a few folks monitoring that, so we'll be able to get some of those um, answered for you. We're so glad that you signed up for us and, and we're so glad that we're here. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Kazoo, do you want to go ahead and kick it off? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Holly, for this wonderful introduction. Um, <clears throat> so uh, first of all, happy Friday, everyone. And we are very excited to be here and also to present to you guys, to bring forth to you guys this presentation. So my name is Javito Okazu. I'm a uh, doctor you prepared nurse. Uh, and currently I'm a uh, director of nursing at Community Healthcare Network. Hi, my name is Sara Fernandez. I'm the founder and CEO of Previ, and uh, we are the technology partner to Community Healthcare Network in this program. Thank you for the invitation, and we are very excited to be here. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee. I'm the medical director at CHN's um, uh, clinic in the Tremont, and I'm really excited to be here to share with you guys what we've been working on. Awesome. Okay, so I'll start here. I'm going to give a little bit of background about Community Healthcare Network itself and also about the RPM Remote Patient Monitoring Project. So CHN um, is a not-for-profit organization. It's made up of 14 FQHCs in Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan. We also have mobile vans and we provide primary care, GYN, um, behavioral health, dental, nutrition, wellness, social services to underserved New Yorkers. The neighborhoods that we serve are considered to be high risk, of course, especially for chronic conditions like hypertension. So in New York City, approximately 20, 28% of adults um, are diagnosed with hypertension, but in our communities, that number is about 40%. And this translates to about 7,700 unique adult CHM patients with a diagnosis of hypertension. And of these patients, only about 50% of them are considered to be adequately controlled today. And this number has declined, as you can see um, on the graph, um, with the onset of the COVID pandemic, we, you know, patients are not being seen in office. They haven't been checking their blood pressure. A lot of them don't have blood pressure monitors at home, afraid to come into the clinic. So um, in January, um, HHS through HRSA awarded grants to about 500 health centers um, nationwide, including CHN to help improve hypertension amongst racial and ethnic minorities that are at higher risk for hypertension. Um, and it's called the National Health Hypertension Control Initiative. And with this grant, we created a truly collaborative um, RPM hypertensive program where uncontrolled hypertensive patients are offered a blood pressure monitor, which connects via Bluetooth to their smartphone app so that when the patient checks their blood pressure, the program enables remote monitoring and automated notifications sent to the patient and to their care team. The definitions of hypertension we're using for the purposes of this project, project are from the JNC7 recommendations using uh, 140 over 90 as a cutoff um, in order to be consistent with the definitions in the relevant data that we collect here at CHN for quality and monitoring purposes. Next slide. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, so with the increased use of telehealth in our current healthcare landscape, uh, advancement of remote patient monitoring, RPM, and chronic disease management, such as hypertension, has become a priority for CHN as an organization. This initiative is essentially a first, the first remote care program at CHN. Um, and as Dr. Lee stated earlier, this was funded through HRSA, and, and the goal was for us is for us to improve blood pressure control within our servicing communities and also to help address racial disparities in healthcare. So um, 
you know, considering this problem that is presented to us, a core group was formed, which comprises myself, Dr. Lee, and Dr. Fernandez. And we've collaborated with other uh, members to our, our healthcare landscape, in addition to us, uh, Previ, who is our online platform partner. And this collaboration is also sponsored by our chief medical officer and uh, our vice president of nursing um, to uh, see this project through. Now I'll defer to uh, Dr. Lee again, who will talk about the uh, clinical implication of this project. So the clinical parameters um, of the remote uh, blood pressure monitoring were based basically on JNC and AHA guidelines and also um, going through some other similar study designs, um, which were translated into smartphone app notifications. So the notifications will go into further detail later, but they're designated at high, medium and low risk. Um, and they depend on the patient's blood pressure measurements um, and, um, uh, and also the frequency of their visits. The eligibility was determined by, of course, access to smartphone device and also exclusion diagnoses based on evidence-based medicine for populations, for example, that require stricter blood pressure management, for example, kidney disease or pregnancy, heart failure, where the program or where the program wouldn't be appropriate, you know, in um, palliative care, for example. Um, the training um, um, for staff and patients were created with a collaborative effort, but um, they were used, we use self-monitoring blood pressure guidelines, mainly provided by um, AHA and AMA, and these materials were reviewed um, later with our health literacy department for ease and use of understanding. So as we mentioned before, we were the technology partner throughout this program. Our responsibilities were creating the patient and the clinical uh, team profile. So for every patient we create, um, we incorporate their, their clinical team. And that is usually comprised of a case manager, a primary care physician, and in some cases uh, for patients that are part of the health home uh, project, uh, someone from the health home staff as well. We also implementing the notifications according to the clinical rules defined by the clinical team. And we work on everything like from um, defining when was the, what's the frequency of the notifications, as well as what is the message that the patient receives, right? How can we make it engaging so the patient uh, becomes engaged in their own care? Um, we also, one of the feedback that we got from CHN was that they wanted to have a way of collecting consents um, without the hassle of having them to do it manually and then uploading them into the EMR. So we have created um, electronic consent tool where the patient signs consent in their own uh, cell phone and that is automatically saved in the platform. And then throughout the project, we continue to work every week together, get feedback from them and continue to improve the platform according to that feedback. Uh, thank you, Sarah and Dr. Lee. So other uh, teams who have supported us with this project or our data colleagues who essentially supported us with uh, formulating the population health query. And this population health query is actually based on the patient eligibility criteria that Dr. Lee alluded to earlier. Uh, additionally to that, uh, the, the data team supported also with the clinician master list and also uh, a search engine for um, who essentially supports with the data provisioning process. Um, lastly, we have our marketing and training colleagues who supported us with um, outreaching to the eligible patients. Uh, they will also be supporting us with uh, aggregate data reporting. Uh, grant, well, they've supported us with the grant writing and our training and education department supported us with developing Prevy Guide for staff and patients in addition to reviewing the consents. And lastly, with the uh, translation uh, services elements uh, um, involved in this project. So right now we're looking at our um, project timeline. So like this is um, all like the actions that were uh, um, pretty much completed throughout like the, uh, the, 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 the course of the past few months. So as of January, 2021, we identified the platform or the online platform who are our private colleagues and the blood pressure devices. As of April, we were introduced to uh, our private colleagues and we began outreach to our health home colleagues and marketing colleagues. As of May of 2021, we began outreach to uh, our training and education department and our private colleagues started testing the devices in addition to uh, implementing the configuration of the clinical rules. 
as of June, uh, the data provisioning process begun and we, we've also leased the blood pressure devices. As of August, we launched the, uh, the pilot. Uh, as of September, we began the meaningful survey for our patients and we started introducing the RPM initiative to our colleagues, whether it's health homes, whether it is um, the, the clinicians or the nurses. Uh, and at that same time, also the uh, clinician or particularly Dr. Lee began to follow up with the patients or the, the pilot patients rather. And as of October, we are uh, working closely with our marketing colleagues who are, who are essentially uh, beginning the, uh, out, the mass outreach to the eligible patients. Um, in the context of collaboration, one thing that we, uh, we also wanted to be aligned with the future of nursing 2020, 2030, charting a path to achieve health equity uh, report which stipulates that nurses should be full partners with physicians and other healthcare professionals in redesigning healthcare in the United States. Um, and as we're collaborating in, on this project and seeing this project through, we want to meet three outcomes. So the first outcome is promoting patients' engagement in their care. The second outcome is achieving blood pressure control uh, for what essentially is less than 140 over 90 for enrolled patients over the course of at least one month and thirdly, we want improvement in blood pressure control in increments of 10% of enrolled patients each year, resulting to an improvement among 30% of the enrolled patients at the conclusion of the project. Uh, so in the context of this uh, presentation and exercise, um, we've utilized the uh, MAP framework delineated by the American Heart Association, uh, which essentially stands for measure accurately, act rapidly, and partner with patients. So with the first um, element of the map, uh, the, the map framework, which is measured accurately, the first thing that we did do is render training to our patients on the uh, SMBP device and also on the Prevy platform. But one thing that we did to ensure that they understood the, um, the training is a return demonstration. And this return demonstration is currently being archived uh, on the Prevy platform for those patients. The next element is the element of data validity. So, at the enrollment phase of the, uh, of the project, we communicate to the patient that the device that is being handed to them should be only used by them and they should be the only ones uh, entering data on the platform. And at every routine opportunity that we get to connect with the patient, we also do ensure, we also uh, verify with the patient that, that the information that they are entering in the platform is actually their information. And um, lastly, in the context of measuring data accurately, the platform sends not notification to the patient to take two blood pressures um, at both points, which is the AM and the PM. And the second blood pressure is the one that is being recorded on the platform. Now I'll defer again to Dr. Lee, who will talk about our the, the second element of the framework, which is acting rapidly. So, so this slide shows some rules for the smartphone application, which are notifications that are sent to the smartphone app and platform depending on the patient's blood pressure monitoring activity and results. So they, act, they allow for the patient and the clinical team, which includes um, health homes care manager, uh, patient navigator, nursing staff, and provider to act rapidly. So as you can see, the notifications are designated as green, yellow, and red um, for low, medium, and high-risk notifications. And these are the ones, the rules for the patients, but there are other notifications that are not shown up here for the health homes care management staff and for clinical nursing staff. Um, some of the low risk notifications, um, you know, are not acknowledgement for logging their blood pressure um, and controlled readings. Um, also, reminder, as these blood pressure cuffs are going to be returned after the blood pressure is controlled for one to three months at the discretion of the provider, their loaners, um, and um, the high risk notifications are basically um, prompts to alert emergency services um, if your blood pressure are um, at emergency levels and um, to recheck if there's large fluctuations. So the third element of the uh, MAP framework is partner with patients. So as we can see here on the screen, uh, this is a beautiful reminder for the patients to uh, um, check their new care plan, what to monitor their new care plans, and also uh, to uh, verify their, their blood pressure activity. Um, so, and the way the, those notifications are also set up is to uh, promote patient engagement in their care. Uh, the second element to uh, uh, partnering with patients is the monthly clinical evaluation, which is facilitated by the, uh, the clinicians. 
Uh, and that's like another way for us like to uh, keep track of the patients that are in the program and to monitor their progress um, as they, they are uh, going through the motions of uh, the RPM program. And lastly, uh, the in-person and telephonic visits follow-up for newly enrolled patients. So at the seven day mark, um, we, um, our case manager health home colleagues render a, an in-person visit to the patient's home to ensure that, uh, to ensure to pretty much follow up with any technical or clinical questions that the patient may have. And similarly, we render a, a telephonic call to the patient uh, to address those concerns as well. Sarah? So we also wanted to give you um, a bit more uh, insight into how the, the Prevy works. So this is what the patient uh, get, sees in their app. Uh, the previous um, slide showed the notification that the patient gets even when they are not in the app. When they have their phone regularly without being in the app, they get the notification, on, hey, it's time to measure your blood pressure, whatever notification they need to get. Uh, but when they go into the app, um, what they see is, first of all, uh, the image on the left shows two cards, and this is basically telling them what they need to do that day. The, the one at the bottom reminds them, hey, you need to monitor your blood pressure. The one at the top is an educational card, because we felt in collaboration with Community Healthcare Network, we also wanted to encourage patients to learn more about their condition so they can take better care of themselves. So the next one that you see is actually one of those educational cards where um, the patient is learning about uh, hypertension. The next one is what they see when they need to enter the data. They can enter the data directly from the um, blood pressure monitor via Bluetooth, or they can enter the data manually. And then finally, the patient can also see how their vital signs are uh, changing over time. Um, in the next time, this is the view for the clinical team. We work with the Community Healthcare Network clinical team to implement those clinical rules. So um, they um, define what were the parameters where they wanted to see, okay, if this patient, their um, blood pressure is too high, I want you to highlight it uh, in with a red color or yellow color, um, orange color, depending on what the limits were. What you can see on the right-hand side that you have uh, these two columns highlighted for this patient is we are also monitoring whether the patient is engaged in their care or not. So here we are seeing that the patient hasn't entered any data for three days and how many days per month the patient has been entering the data. Um, and this will become important when we start um, seeking reinvestment for these type of services. Um, then the screenshot that you have at the right lower uh, quarter, um, that's a, just a view of a, the, enter, the entering of the blood pressure uh, readings for one of those patients. Um, and then just one more thing, uh, here you can see um, besides uh, several icons, um, the clinical team also gets different additional information on is there an issue in this patient. Here you see these green bubbles. They are all green with zero. That means that there is no issue. But there may be an issue of the patient uh, is not entering data or the patient blood pressure is very high. Um, so a lot of information that the clinical team can quickly see in this dashboard. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so in order to, to uh, promote uh, the seamless, seamlessness rather of uh, this, uh, um, this initiative, we've developed an enrollment workflow. Um, and this has been in partnership with all like, the different departments, but particularly also with our marketing colleagues. So essentially marketing outreach is to the patient. Uh, patient, you know, uh, communicate whether like, they want to participate in the program or not. If they, are, if they do not want to participate, it is documented. And if they do want to participate, which is a yes, the clinical team confirms uh, the patient's eligibility based on the uh, uh, criteria which was communicated by Dr. Lee earlier, but we'll go over that again. Uh, next, uh, the Prevy team is notified uh, to begin the uh, data provisioning process. And at that same time, an in-person visit is also scheduled. Um, and at the in-person visit with the clinician, uh, the clinician reviews the, uh, the details of the program with the patient and the patient signs the consent. Thereafter, the uh, qualified healthcare staff uh, facilitates the training for the patient and pairs the device, uh, hands the device to the patient, 
Uh, and thereafter, the, the staff uh, evaluates the patient for the return demonstration, completes the competency form, and saves it on Previ. Um, and the last step of this, the workflow is at the one, between the one to three months mark, the patient is evaluated. Should the patient means the uh, outcome, they are graduated from the, uh, the program and the uh, device is returned to uh, the organization. Uh, but one thing I'd like to note is the, particularly, I mean, I, the, the piloting phase for the health home patients, there is a uh, seven days in-person home visit that happens. And later on during the presentation, we'll, we will talk about like the benefit of the in-person visit. Um, and as far as like, the inclusion criteria to participate in this, uh, in this, in this project, um, the first criteria is the last two office blood pressure of um, greater than 140 for the systolic BP and greater than 90 for the diastolic BP. Uh, the second element is diagnosis of hypertension in the preceding year. And lastly, the patient um, should have a smartphone. Dr. Lee? Okay, so the pilot patient enrollment, which is a little different from the mass marketing outreach, which actually has occurred in this past week, it's exciting. Um, and it was um, done after the pilot was completed. So this is, we're talking about the pilot. So in order to enroll the patients into the pilot, the provider, myself and one of my colleagues over at Tremont, identified four appropriate um, patients based on enrollment criteria at our office visit and introduced the program. We made a follow-up appointment um, and invited our health home support staff to this appointment to help in enrolling the patient after I had our, my uh, regular encounter with uh, the patient. Um, the CHN staff member um, then provided the, ac the actual blood pressure monitor itself, which is loaned until the blood pressure is controlled about one to three months on the provider's discretion, and then helped the patient to download the app onto their phone and then sign, the, um, sign into the app and sign the consent form, pair the blood pressure monitor to their smartphone via Bluetooth and reviewed how to take blood pressure correctly and navigate through um, Previ. Um, they are... Um, they are connected through Bluetooth. The graphics um, are the screenshots that you can see on the screen of our patient handouts that are included in the patient's enrollment packet that aid the patient and the CHN staff member in downloading the app and pairing the app to the monitor. Um, the handouts also include how to correctly monitor the blood pressure. There's some frequently asked questions and all handouts were reviewed by our health literacy team. The consent was reviewed by our legal team. In addition to these handouts, um, there is a script which the CHN staff member can refer to in order to easily recall the steps of the patient enrollment because it, it can get a little cumbersome, but it's, it's easily and step-by-step laid out for for anyone to be able to do. It doesn't have to be the, the nurse practitioner or the physician doing the enrollment. Thank you, Dr. Lee. So uh, as Dr. Lee mentioned earlier, uh, on August 16th, we, lo we launched the uh, pilot with four patients uh, who actually were uh, part of her uh, site. And out of those four patients, two of them are, well, four of them are receiving medical care at CHN, but two of them are also, re also part of the health home program. Uh, but with the pilot lunch, there were some elements that were learned. So the, the first element learned was the language element. So uh, at the first visit, we had a patient who is uh, who is Spanish speaking, and our health home colleagues were uh, uh, well, they were valuable enough to support us with the transitioning element of that visit, uh, which then prompted us to develop materials in other languages, uh, and also to uh, ensure that the platform itself can be translated into different languages as well. The second element that was learned was pertaining to device connectivity. Uh, so we've learned that based on the patient's data plan, uh, it may influence their capacity to uh, navigate or have access to the platform. The third element was uh, pertaining to additional supplies, particularly with the blood pressure cuff or the Omron device BP7250. You know the, the the cough sizing for the blood pressure uh, covers a wide I mean a, a big um, a wide range of uh, arm sizes, but we also wanted to be uh, um, mindful of patients who had who have smaller arm sizes, and therefore we decided to uh, purchase smaller arm um, coughs for those patients as well. 
And lastly, um, as patients are being enrolled in the, uh, on the program, we wanted to ensure that they um, have access to both clinical support and technical support, which then prompted us uh, while Prevy colleagues to create a support tab on the Prevy platform. Uh, and in addition to the elements that were learned at the pilot lunch, we also wanted to understand the patient's experience uh, while like, they are participating in this program. So we've uh, shared a survey with the, uh, with the participating patients and fortunately, fortunately, all four patients responded to the survey and the elements that were assessed were one, the ease, to the ease of use of the blood pressure device and the feedback from the, the patients were positive. They stated that overwhelmingly that the device was easy to use. The second element was the, uh, their ability to navigate the platform. So uh, as it pertains to certain themes associated with the platform, such as the frequency of the alarms, the feedback as always well positive. Um, the patient stated that the alarm encouraged them to exhibit the, the appropriate behavior, such as taking the blood pressure or perhaps be mindful of their diet. The second theme is the time of BP check. Um, so what the patient communicated is that as long as like the reminder is there, they would be uh, prompt or inclined to exhibit the right behavior, which is taking their blood pressure in the morning or in the evening. Um, and thirdly, the ease of use of the blood pressure device. And again, with navigating the platform, which was overwhelmingly positive. And lastly, accessing support. So one of the patients did communicate that more support can be available for the patients, particularly when they are newly enrolled in the program. So as I've mentioned earlier, this feedback prompted us to create a tab on Previ uh, where a patient can channel like either like their clinical questions or technical questions, and then we can support them uh, with those matters. Uh, the, the other thing that we do want to talk about the uh, pilot launch is the data implication. So the first element that we do want to discuss as it pertains to data implication is the patient data entry. So as of September, uh, the percentage of patients entering data on the platform is 100%. Uh, so what essentially that means is out of the, out, out of the four patients, one patient may, may enter data maybe once throughout the course of that month. Another patient may have entered data maybe 30 times during that month, but essentially all patients were able to enter data on the platform. So as far as like data entry days for the month of September, we have a total of 47 days with a mean of 11.75 days. The second element that we do want to talk about is compliance. So how did we measure compliance? Compliance is the number of days uh, the, the data is tracked on the platform divided by the current day of the month. So meaning uh, if I'm patient Jean and I've entered 14 days of data on the platform and today is day 28, so uh, the compliance uh, percentage will be 50%. Um, so in, in, in that context, we've, we looked at the data entry compliance uh, between both patient groups. So patient group number one, who, who are like the patients enrolled in the health home program, and patient group number two, who are the patients who are only receiving medical care at CHM. So with the health home uh, uh, patients, we did notice a 75% compliance or, um, with this particular group. And with the patients only receiving medical care, we did observe a 25% compliance. Um, so the contributing factor for the compliance with the health home patients um, was for the patients and if the in-person follow-up within seven days in which they did feel more supported with the clinical and technical uh, questions uh, uh, which were answered by the, uh, the, the case manager staff. Uh, for the medical patients, some of the factors contributing to this compliance were for the patients, an introduction to a new routine. One of the patients communicated that her cell phone was physically damaged. And the, the patients also communicated that the telephonic follow-up was not as comprehensive as the in-person follow-up. So on the right side, we can see a graph here. The MMDM or like the, the, the initials represent the patient's initials and the HAs represent health home patients. So for the first patients, MMDM, we can see that she entered data for the month of September for about, for more than 10 days, and her compliance is about 50%. For patients, BS, who is also part of the health home program, we can see that she entered data for more than 20 days, and her compliance was greater than 80%. And for like the, non -med the medical patients, rather, for instance, patient VM, she entered less than five days of data, and her compliance is less than 20%. And patient CR entered uh, less than 10 days of data and her compliance was less than 40%. Dr. Lee? 
Um, so let's just talk about one of the pilot success cases. It's a patient of mine, 46 year old African American female. She has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, apnea, obesity. She's had uncontrolled hypertension for at least the last four years when she started coming to CHN. Um, and she's seen a lot of different providers and tried different blood pressure regimens and her blood, blood pressure has fluctuated over the years. I just, um, you know, picked some of the blood pressures over the past year since 2017 that you can see on the slide. Um, she and I decided that we would try out the pilot so on August 16th. So she enrolled and she was able to check her blood pressure every morning and, e and evening as recommended um, after a bit of difficulty in the first month due to technical issues. Um, we made some slight adjustments to her medications and um, by two months um, in October, as you can see in the screenshot of her blood pressures on the app, um, the blood pressure was mostly well controlled from October 10th to 16th, um, which was the week prior to her follow-up appointment with me. So I was easily able to access these blood pressures prior to the appointment. And we were really happy about it. We did a little happy dance in the office. She really um, shared with me how much she appreciated the program, um, really felt it connected to care especially um, the reminders, not only to check her blood pressure, but also to read up about healthy diet activities and keep her in check. Um, so I was really um, happy and she, she was also, she continues to be controlled um, and we're excited for the experiences to continue with our patients at CHN as we expand the program this month. Thank you, Dr. Lee. <clears throat> so considering the uh, success with the health home patients, so we decided to roll the, the core group decided to roll the program in two phases. So phase one, uh, we will be running the pro well, expanding the program rather with our health home patients, uh, considering that they have like the in-person uh, 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 visit within the seven days of enrollment with the program. Uh, and this will also give us the opportunity to continue learning with about the about our workflows, uh, given that we'll have a larger pool of patients to uh, you know, have like more data uh, to go by. And this will support us in tweaking our workflows if needed. And during the second phase, we'll expand it to our non-health home patients who are essentially 3,100 30, plus patients um, receiving medical care at CHN. Uh, and uh, this concludes our presentation. Um, and we will open the floor now for uh, comments, uh, questions, and feedback. Sarah, is there anything that you want to add? Um, well, on our end, it has been a pleasure working with um, Community Healthcare Network in this um, in this pilot. And um, I think that one thing that we all learn and appreciate is uh, while technology is important, that a uh, human touch from time to time, it's also critically important. And that's something that we learn from the um, looking at the at the health home patients. Um, yeah, so very excited about this uh, this program and looking forward to the big expansion now. Great. Thank you guys so much. We do have several questions. So I'll start with the first one that we got. Um, what was the age limit on patient engaged in the study? That's 18, um, 18 to oh, 85. 85, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, second question, are the blood pressure monitor devices Bluetooth, Wi-Fi based, cell phone tower? Bluetooth, yes. Bluetooth, okay. All right, and how did you fund the cost of the Privy platform? Are you an FQHC? What are the costs involved for the Privy? So we are an FQHC and we, as Dr. Lee communicated earlier, uh, we were granted funding from HRSA. Mm -hmm. With the HRSA funding, that's how we were able to get the devices and that it was included in the grant. Okay. And is there a way that you're reimbursed for this? Is it just under HRSA then? or? So as far as like reimbursement, we are currently working with our financial partners. Uh, but uh, I'd imagine like in this context, reimbursement would not be with HRSA. It would be okay. Like other friends, whether it's Medicaid, Medicare, and et cetera, to support us with that. Okay. Um, Jim, well, can this... you change, sorry, can you change to your cell phone again for audio? Because it's a bit difficult to 
hear you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Is it better, better now? now? Yeah. My apologies, guys. That's okay. Will the slides be available too for some folks? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. And um, are the CHW engaged in this project as well? Um, the community healthcare workers? Well, mm -hmm. we have our patient navigator, our health homes team who, um, you know, are going into the patient's home a week after they're enrolled in the program, which was really um, integral into cool. uh, compliance. All right. Um, is this a pilot initiative? And if so, how many patients are enrolled? The, the four patients were enrolled in the pilot and um, we're expanding to 200 plus uh, health homes enrolled patients this okay. month and uh, over 3,000 in January. Yep. Great. And then was this a loaner cuff program or were the patients able to keep the cuffs? So the cuffs and the device are loaner, uh, loaner cuffs. Okay. So at, at the completion of their, um, of the program, like they will return both the uh, cuff in addition to the device. Great, okay. Um, could you repeat what your initial goals were? So I'll go back to that slide. So the first yeah. goal is to um, keep the patients, well, to promote patients engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. The second goal is to control the blood pressure within a uh, the one month timeline. And the goal is to have it lowered in 140 over 90. And the last goal is to uh, improve in blood pressure control in increments of 10% of the enrolled patients, resulting in an improvement of 30% of the enrolled patients at the conclusion of the project. Cool. Okay. And um, you mentioned the app and smartphones. What are the sense do you have that it's patients with the smartphones, what percentage, and ones without? don't know exactly what the percentage yeah. of patients with or without smartphones majority of our patients do have smartphone access um and gene you know he has he'll talk about his um uh connecting to our social services to help with um connecting patients with a smartphone app apps we also have non-bluetooth um uh, blood pressure cuffs um that were um uh, loan to uh, loan to us from the um, Chicanias, which have um, you know for regular remote blood pressure monitoring without Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a possibility also. And okay. just to add, we are also moving um, in addition to having the app. Previ is now developing a chat function, so patients can just get the regular text messages and um, get not the same experience because you lose some functionalities, but at least they, they will be able to report their blood pressure and the clinical team will get that data um, there. Also, I want to add that there's a federal program that helps low-income people to get access to cell phones. Mm -hmm. So that's something that also FQHCs can explore. And many of them, in our case, when we talk to the, um, I, I don't know the- Our social department. Yeah, they they actually were aware of that program, and in the next phase of the of the expansion, maybe we consider reaching out to those places that does, don't have smartphones, but mm -hmm. we can work with them, um, helping them access uh, those smartphones. Well, that's wonderful because it may be something that you didn't think about that you could reach out to those folks that didn't have the smartphone access. That's great. Um, okay, but a couple more questions. We still have a couple more minutes here. In the pilot, what was the time for onboarding patient training on the self-monitoring blood pressure cuffs and platform? So we typically reserve about an hour to facilitate the training for the patients, which comprises of us or from the clinical team to render the, the, the training for the patient. And the second element is for them to return the demonstration. Cool. Um, okay, have you had... Have you came across any grants that will support purchase? Oh, we talked about that. Sorry. Yeah, the, you're, you're answering those as, as I can. Um, I got ahead of myself. Do you think this program will be sustainable? I think with the reimbursement opportunities, it is definitely sustainable. But yet again, this program can be applied to, uh, you know, the management of any chronic diseases, whether it's uh, diabetes or 
um, you know, just a wide array of other like, you know, chronic pathologies. So with the reimbursement infrastructure, like I definitely foresee it being sustainable. I'm not sure if my other colleagues want to add anything in that context. Yes, we certainly hope so. And have been talking with, um, you know, people in our administration about um, helping us to achieve that, especially financially. Cool. Okay. And, and during this program, were the patients connected to any other community outside support sources for behavior change or anything like that, like exercise groups or? Well, we do have wellness uh, within CHN and the nutrition. So, um, and oftentimes the nutritionist and the wellness coordinators will refer out to different programs that are available within our communities, um, depending on which of the 14 um, clinics they're at. Okay. Uh, and if I may add one more thing to, uh, to uh, Dr. Lee's uh, point is uh, even on the platform, we've uh, we'll partnered with our nutrition colleagues who have, or well, nutrition also training and education, who have captured, um, materials to uh you know for uh to support like with exercising or like you know better nutrition which mm -hmm. actually lives on the platform and we also do render to that to the patient as well on the day of enrollment oh wow okay um did you have anything in place you might have um, answered this before but did you have a self-monitoring blood pressure um like program in place before this so that you kind of build one this is a very first uh program uh at oh, CHM. Wow. so like we we started this from uh you know, the bottom um, collaboratively with our private colleagues. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, you know, a lot of the uh, clinical feedback which was provided, which were provided to her, she uh, configured the platform to uh, meet our needs. So, um, and again, it's, this is like the very first program that we've, uh, that we were building up at CHN uh, in the uh, context of RPM. Cool. Awesome. That's it. So exciting seeing that from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, what was the integration into EMR? What was um, the physician experience? Did the alerts come through email or EHR that triggered the doctor or just meds or anything like that? How was that set up? So we decided for this first uh, phase, which was a pilot, um, we decided not to integrate with the EMR at the CHN. They have an ECW, um, but we are uh, starting to look into that uh, integration. Previ is built on a smart on fire and all EMRs are required to have a fire integration starting in June of next year. So um, we are looking forward to starting that work um, with them. The physicians, the clinical team receives notifications um, according to the clinical rules that we have defined. And they get those notifications depending on the severity of the of the issue. They may get a notification in their smartphone, and that's only reserved for when the patient is um, critical, or uh, otherwise they just need to go into the platform and check. Okay, do I have any issues with any of my patients? Um, Jean or Dr. Lee, I don't know if you want to add anything else. Um, I can talk about the physician experience. I mean, until it's integrated into our um, ECW, it, you know, we're going to have to, it'll be another thing to log into, but it's pretty easy to log into it. It's, it takes like literally five seconds and I have access to all of the blood pressures that the patient did for the past, you know, however long that I want to look at. So for myself and my other colleague who, um, who logged in, it was, it was great because we were able to see, you know, all the blood pressures that we were, want to see at the visit. Um, and that's when we would do most of the medication adjustment. Um, there was um, the uh, health homes were receiving the notifications on their, um, uh, on their platform. And also the patient would be able to call in because they do receive notifications to contact um, the center if certain blood pressures reach a certain number or if they're concerned, um, which one of the patients did do. And, um, you know, I was able to look at their blood pressures prior to the visit and say, hey, let's just double up on the dosage of this medication for the two weeks prior to your appointment, which we did and it helped. So um, those are the ways that we can, we communicate. Um, That's great. That's really great. Um, a couple more. I think we have one more question. If you have tra a standard training checklist, this is from Tim, you could go through that an orientation appointment. I think that would be very useful. Do you have like something like that, like an orientation packet? 
we do have a package uh, packet of um, orientation materials and we have, it doesn't have check boxes, but there's a script that goes through each of the different um, documents that were created in order to facilitate the training. Oh, sorry about that. Um, well, I think it's all the questions or time we have for questions. If you want to, um, Dr. Kazoo, put your um, email addresses back up on the end there. And if you have any other questions, you can certainly um, direct this towards our wonderful panelists today. Thank you guys so much. This is such a robust and very, inf I mean, I learned so much uh, with your slides and I'm, I'm eager to get them as well. So um, we will be uh, having these available for you. We can send these out. They're gracious enough to share them. I'm gonna go ahead and turn you guys loose because we have to go back to our other session. Um, it starts at 10 o'clock. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Again, thank you guys so very much, Sarah. Uh, Jacques, thank you so Rebecca, much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Thank you for thank having you guys. us. Thank, thank you guys you. for joining us too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.